Hey, what is going on guys? RVZ Stealth here, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my opinion on the best 80 carries for Season 5, Patch 5.7. So, first up on my list, I have Lucian, Pro Solution, are he's one of the burstiest 80 carries in the game, especially when you get to mid-game as him. He can duel pretty much any 80 carry in the game if he's got three items. He's also great at all stages of the game, and his ultimate is super strong as well for either clearing out waves or just chunking down an opponent. When you get to late game as Lucian, if you can get a fully channeled culling off on the enemy AD carry, you can actually kill them, so it's, re it's a really strong ability, and if you use it correctly, it can be very useful. He's also got great mobility with his E, and his passive is also really strong for getting a lot of damage off in teamfights and in lane as well. And Lucian's also really good with Braum, so if you haven't tried that combo out, then I would definitely recommend trying it because with Braum's passive, it enables you guys to get the stun off from Braum's passive a lot quicker in lane, which is really good. And some con solution are he is shorter range than some of the other AD carries, and his W, after the nerfs, it really doesn't do any damage. Next up on my list, I have Kog'Ma, so with the meta shifting to a tank meta right now, I think Kog'Ma is actually a pretty underrated and a pretty good pick. His W allows him to shred tanks because it does percentage health damage, and he also builds a Blade of the Ruined King most of the time, so he's just going to be able to shred those tanks um, come late game. He's also got long range with his W, which makes it really nice for him to just stay back and stay at a safe distance during team fights. He's got great poke as well with his ultimate and a pretty nice slow on his E, which he can use to kite away. And he's also got one of the best late games for AD carries in the game because he just scales so well and with his W doing percentage health damage, he's just going to be able to put out a ton of damage come late game. Some cons to Kog'Ma are that his passive isn't really that great, it promotes dying and that's not really something you want to do. Um, it can end up getting you some kills in lane, like if you end up losing out on a bad trade, you could trade one for one, but it's not the best passive um, when you come to think of it. And he also, he doesn't have any mobility, so you have to be careful about your positioning in teamfights as Kog'Ma, and if you're not very confident in your positioning when playing as AD carry, then Kog'Ma might not be the best pick for you. Next up on my list, I have Graves. So, pros to Graves are he's one of the strongest laners in the game, especially when he does hit level 6 because he's got really strong burst damage. And if you pair Graves up with someone like an Annie or a Leona, the burst damage at level 6 is just unbeatable because if you play with Leona, um, her passive enables Graves to get a lot of damage off in lane. And if Leona can land her ultimate on the enemy, it just enables Graves to follow it up with all of his abilities and it brings her so much burst. He's also got good mobility with his E and pretty good wave clear as well with his W and his Q. And he's also got one of the strongest passives for an AD carry in the game because it allows him to trade really nicely in lane and allows him to take less damage during teamfights as well because it gives him armor for... It depends on how long you're in combat for, but every time you're auto-attacking a champion or a minion, then you're going to gain more armor. Some or one con to Graves are, is that he is pretty weak if he does fall behind. Next up on my list, I have Sivir. So Prosa Sivir, are she's a very strong laner, one of the strongest in the game in my opinion because of the damage from her Q and also because of her spell shield, which makes her a very good pick against any CC supports in the game, like a Leona or Mor a Morgana, a Thresh, a Blitzcrank. It just enables her to play really aggressive in lane against those champions because as long as her spell shield is up, then she can just go aggressive and not worry about getting hooked or binded or jumping on by the Leona. She's also got one of the strongest or she's one of the strongest wave clear AD carries in the game because of her Q and her W and in my opinion her ultimate is one of the strongest for solo Q because it enables you to catch people out and enables you to disengage. You can just do so much with her ultimate and it's just one of the strongest abilities in my opinion in the game for a champion to have. She's also pretty easy to win lane as, in my opinion. I have over a 75% win rate, I want to say, with Sivir in Season 5 with over around 30 games played. And I don't think I've ever 
lost Lannister. I might have lost like once or twice, but because of her spell shield and because of her good poke damage, it's just really hard to lose Lannister in my opinion. Some cons to Sivir are she is shorter range than some of the other AD carries, and she's quite vulnerable when her ultimate and her E are not up because she doesn't have any mobility, and it's pretty easy to get caught out as Sivir because she does have shorter range. So, number one on my list for patch 5.7 is Jinx. Prosa Jinx are she's great at all stages in the lane or all stages of the game. She's got a very strong laning phase because she's got long range on her Q, so she can just use that to poke down her opponents and stay back and farm from a nice distance. And late game, she's one of the best hyper carries in the game. She does a ton of damage because if you have your fish bones out during team fights, you're gonna be able to get AoE damage off from your auto attacks, which is really, really good. And no other AD carry in the game can do that. She's one of the strongest tower pushers in the game as well because of the passive on her Q. And she's also long ranged as well. So like I said, she can just sit back in team fights and use that to say, stay at a safe distance. And she can also use that to poke down her opponents in lane. She's got great CC as well with her W and her E, which most AD carries don't have. They don't have two CC abilities, which makes Jinx pretty unique in that sense. And she's got a very strong ultimate as well. You can use that to finish off low health targets, or you can also use it to just get a nice little bit of burst damage off um, during team fights if the enemies are grouped up. She is, she also snowballs really hard, and she's got great cleanup potential in team fights because of her passive. A con to Jinx is that she does not have a gap closer, so like Kogma and like Sivir, you have to be careful about your positioning because if you do get caught out, then you're, you might as well just play a champion like Graves or Lucian who does have mobility and be able to stay alive um, for a longer duration during team fights if your positioning isn't very good. So first up on the honorable mentions, I have Corky. Corky is one of the strongest burst AD carries in the game. He isn't the best in this tank meta though, which is why I don't have him on my top five for this patch. However, he does have a strong mid game, like I said, and if you can just get ahead of your opponents and end the game before it goes to late, because he does fall off in the late game, then he is still a pretty good pick. So next up on my list, I have Tristana. So Tristana is definitely one of the strongest late game AD carries in the game, in my opinion. She's got one of the longest ranged auto attacks in the game once you do get to late game because of her passive. And she's also got a surprising amount of burst damage. If she puts her E on the target, gets a couple of auto attacks off, uses her ultimate, she's actually got some good burst. And she's got self peel and good mobility with her ultimate and her W as well. So if you're looking for a safe AD carry, then I would definitely recommend trying out Tristana. So next up on my list, I have Kalista. Kalista, in my opinion, is harder to play than most AD carries in the game because she's got a shorter auto attack range and she doesn't have an actual gap closer. She needs to be auto attacking an enemy for to use her passive. And I wouldn't recommend her for lower elos unless you're really good on Kalista because her passive, in my opinion, is just too hard to use um, unless you do know how to play her and you have played a lot of games with her. Um, but for higher elos, if you can use her passive correctly, then she can do really well. She's a great kiting champion, and she's also got a pretty strong early game because of the damage on her E. So unless you've played a lot of Kalista, I wouldn't recommend playing her. But if you have played a lot of her, then she can be a very good pick. Next up on my list, I have Vayne. So Vayne is also a pretty good pick in this tank meta right now because of the true damage she has with her W. She does have a weaker laning phase though, which is why she's usually not on my top fives. If she had a little bit of a better laning phase, then I'd probably put her on there, but she does require, or she doesn't have much kill pressure in lane unless you can synergize with your support somehow. Um, however, if you can get to late game as Vayne, then she can put out a ton of damage. So she's a pretty good pick, but because of her weaker early game, she's not on my top five. Next up on my list, I have Ezreal. So Ezreal is a pretty good pick because he's got great mobility with his E. He's got really strong poke damage with his Q and he's got great wave clear with his ultimate as well. So he is a little bit harder to play because he is skill shot reliant, but he's a very safe AD carry because of his E. And if you can pick up red buff, then you could just kite with your Q really nicely because it does um, proc the red buff slow. 
Next up on my list, I have Caitlyn. So in my opinion, she's one of the easiest um, AD carries in the game because she has a long auto attack range, which she can use to poke down her opponents in lane and it makes her a really safe laner um, because of her long auto attack range and because of her E as well. And she also does scale really well into the late game. Her ultimate actually does a ton of damage come late game as well, so don't be afraid to use it to just poke down a squishy target if they're not if they're not near one of their teammates because it could end up just winning you the fight because they might have to go back and then your team could end up starting a 5v4 fight, so don't be afraid to use Caitlyn's ultimate for poke in the late game. And last but not least on the honorable mentions, I have Draven. So Draven is harder to play in my opinion because his Q can be hard to catch during team fights and he really does rely on catching his Q to deal maximum damage. So if you have played a lot of Draven and you can catch your Q, then he is a very strong pick because he can put out a ton of damage. But if you haven't played Draven, then I wouldn't recommend jumping into rank straight away with him because he is harder to play at first. So that is all for the video guys, if you enjoyed then be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you all have an awesome day and I will see you in my next video.